What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, June 29th. Let's jump into the alerts for the week. Kind of a crazy week of trading. Some down days and then some last uh, couple days, including today, big up days in the market. So good volatility. We love it. Hope to see more of that. Two-sided action is what we love to see. So hopefully see more and more of that. Uh, starting with the first trade was an opening adjusting trade in the ES, the S&P futures. So we added an iron condor on here. So if we take a look at ES, and here's here's what I was saying, we had you know, a couple of big down days, and then the last couple of days have ripped back higher. And so if we take a look, here's the iron condor that we put on, still fairly centered, just waiting for some more time to pass here. And then the very next trade was a, a closing uh, iron condor, closing adjusting trade where we had on a, another one, booked a uh, profit over 50% of max profit on that piece of the trade. And then we're still holding this one here. Uh, in ES, we also have a long put vertical, which you see here that we're keeping on to keep that short delta, that short bias in our portfolio. You can see it's in range, got a little bit of profit on this piece, but just waiting for some more downside to benefit that piece. And that's a, that's a separate trade. So we've got an iron condor and then a long put vertical, both in ES. Uh, next trade was an opening adjusting trade in CL. And wow, what a, what a move this week in oil. Uh, we, we added a strangle onto oil. We already had one, we added another. And uh, let's take a look at a chart of oil. It's, it's had a huge move just uh, boom, 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 boom. This thing is on a tear to the upside. And so what that looks like on our positions is we've got two strangles. One is this adjusted one where we already rolled the puts up once. And then if we take a look at where the, the value of that put is currently, you can, see, you can see we still have some profit left in that. So we're not ready to make another adjustment there yet. So we'll just continue to hold. And these are in September. So we've got plenty of time, 48 days to expiration. And then the other uh, alert that I just mentioned, which is adding another strangle, uh, you can see price is already up in our upper end of our, our, uh, our range here. So if it continues to move higher, we'll roll these puts up and just continue to manage as needed. Obviously, if price of oil calms down and comes back into range, we'll be, we'll be good to go and, and nothing to do there. So continue to manage that next week. Uh, implied volatility still seems to stay uh, continues to stay relatively high in oil. Let's take a look at the chart here. Uh, yeah, it's still 58 on the uh, percentile, 48 on the IV rank. So still excellent, uh, excellent symbol to be in, selling premium with that high implied volatility. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in DIA. So price had come down and breached our downside break even on our uh, our iron condor. So we closed out the call vertical side, closed out the untested side, and then still holding the two sets of the short call verticals. So if we take a look at DIA and go to our analyze tab here. So here's one of our uh, short call verticals, which was previously from an iron condor. You can see that's still in our range here. Could use a little more downside to benefit that piece. Then the other short call vertical, uh, I'm sorry, this is the, this is the short put vertical from, from, the, uh, from the trade I just mentioned. So uh, you can see after the last couple of days up move, price has come back into our range. So if it continues to move higher, we'll take that off and book a profit on that iron condor. And then the other piece was the one in August, which is a uh, short call vertical. So just looking for a little bit of downside there. So we've got three different pieces to this trade. Uh, these were all originally part of our iron condor trade in DIA. So just continuing to manage that as needed. Next trade was a opening trade. We sold an iron condor in IYR, which is the real estate ETF. IV percentile popped up to the 74 level at the time we put that on. And so IYR, you can see here, still pretty centered in our range. Implied volatility has gone up a little bit even since then down a little bit today, but uh, options have become a little bit more expensive since we put that on. So you see that we're down a little bit, but still well within our range. And we'll just continue to watch that and uh, watch time pass in there. 
Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in corn, forward slash ZC. So we closed out one of our iron condors in corn, booked, a, uh, booked uh, almost 40% of max profit in just seven days. So those options contracted nicely, giving us a quick profit there on that piece. And then we've still got uh, uh, another iron condor here where you can see prices right here, well within our range. And then uh, uh, I believe this was the next alert here, but I'll just go ahead and click on it. We added another iron condor. Now this was the one that we previously had on. The one I just showed was the one we just added. So this one's hanging out down here, lower end of the range, but we are up about 1% in corn today. So that helped get us back into our range here. So we'll just we'll wait and see what happens here. If price continues to move higher, that'll benefit that. If it moves lower, we'll make the necessary adjustments as needed. And then the next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in CL. So this was the adjusted strangle that I already showed you. Uh, let's just go back to, to recap that one more time. This is this one here where we rolled from August to September. Let me reset this so I can click on the right ones. So that's this one here. So this is one we rolled from August to September, kept the same strikes. And now since then, prices continue to move higher, but we'll continue to manage that as needed. So remember, once we get under 21 days to expiration with the, with the strangles or straddled or some type of uncovered position, we like to roll out to the next expiration cycle, give ourselves more time, collect some more credit. So that's what we did here. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in FXI. So this is the Chinese large cap ETF and IV percentile got up to 73. So we added another butterfly. So we had one and we simply just added another one, just like we teach in the course. So this is the one we just added. You can see prices moved up a bit since we added that. And then the one that we had on previously in the July expiration, you can see uh, prices moved up today. So it's starting to come back back close to our range, uh, but we'll continue to watch these. So we've just got one butterfly in July, one in August, and we'll just continue to manage those as we need, as price moves around. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So that's the one I already, I already went over. Uh, we adjusted our strikes from 249, 252 to 245, 250. The one thing I wanted to point out here is we had we'd been trading these with a three point wide strike. Now in August, uh, there wasn't dollar wide strikes. There's only $5 wide strikes. So we had to move to $5 wide. And that's just part of what you have to do. If, if there's not dollar wide strikes available, you have to adjust to the nece necessary spread. So if we take a look, let's go back to that. And I wanna, I wanna make sure you see that. So that's this one here that we rolled out to August or it's the 245, 250. So we had to go five points wide there. And what happens is if we take a look at the trade tab in August, what you'll see is that they're dollar wide. Uh, in fact, let's see, did this, oh yeah, they did. Okay, so what happens is once you get closer to that expiration date, they will start to add those dollar wide strikes. So when we put this on, there was only the 245, 250, there wasn't these dollar wide strikes in between. However, now they have since added them. However, look at look at the open interest. There's there's zero open interest to this point. Now, those will start to get some volume. We'll start to get some open interest as we get closer to expiration. Um, but um, but for now, we are uh, using the five point wide strikes, which is uh, which is just fine. So, just widening those out a little bit. Not a big issue. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in the queues. So we rolled one of our short, short call verticals from July to August and adjusted those strikes as price had moved down and then still holding our other two sets in July. So if we take a look at the queues, kind of similar to DIA. So we've got this one here in July. Uh, you can see prices still in our range here, looking for a little bit of downside. And these were originally part of iron condors that we've adjusted and same here. So kind of same situation. This one's a little bit deeper into our range. Uh, just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that. Again, holding these for some of that short bias, that short delta that it gives our overall portfolio. And then this is the one in August that we had rolled. Uh, and you can see price has moved up a little bit since we've done that. And so still in our range, but just looking for some more downside to benefit that piece. 
If we, uh, if we do get some downside in next week, I'll probably just close out one of these. Um, you know, I don't, instead of holding all three, maybe book a profit, take some profit on one, and then may, may look to re-enter a, a full centered iron condor. I don't like to have more than three pieces, three trades on any one symbol. So we've got three here. So if, I, if we do get some downside and we're able to cut one loose, book a profit on it, then we'll look to reposition a more delta neutral type strategy around, um, around the current price. So we'll see what happens. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So we had a long put vertical on here, got some downside movement. And so we locked in the, uh, the profit on that piece and rolled it out to August. So if we look at XLK, you can see this is where, what we have now and just looking for some more downside. Again, originally put this on for some short delta, short bias in our portfolio. And as we've continued to need that, we've just uh, continued to roll that a couple times. So just looking for some downside in XLK. Next trade was an opening addressing trade in corn. I already mentioned that one. That was the iron condor that we added in corn. And then lastly, uh, today, Friday, we uh, closed out our trade in forward slash 6E, the euro. Uh, had to make a few adjustments there, but paid off nicely for booked a nice winner there. And IV percentile still fairly high, so we may look to re-enter a new position in the euro next week. Uh, let's take a look at a chart of the euro. Nice up move today gave us the benefit, gave us the opportunity to, to close out of this one. And the IV percentile is still above 50, we're right at 54. So going into next week, we may look to enter a new position there. But those are all the trades for the week. Uh, I also will be posting the month end. So this is the last trading day in June. So if we take a look at our closed trades, in fact, let's just go to the uh, performance page on the site. Uh, we're up to year to date. We've closed now 74 trades, average profit up to 216, and our winning percentage now over 89%, which is awesome. So here's here's the June posted, and then obviously we have all the other months uh, posted there as well. So I'll be sending out a video recap for the trades in June. So look for that soon. Okay, so going back to the platform, some of the other trades that we have on. I mentioned oil. I mentioned ES, Natty Gas. So this is one that. Uh, it's actually trying to get filled on today. Didn't get filled, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it over the weekend. Hopefully get a little bit more profit out of this one. Now, if we look at UNG, which is the ETF, the implied volatility has just collapsed in here. It's been, and it's been low. Uh, just gonna bounce around, but now it's down to next to nothing. So if we get out of this, we'll probably just close the trade out, unless we get a spike in implied volatility next week. Uh, but that's just too low to be adding any more um, so after all said and done, we'll probably take a loss, a little loss on the natty gas position, uh, but booking a, booking a nice profit on, on this piece, uh, assuming price stays pretty stable and we get some more contraction going into early next week. So look for that to potentially just close out, but we'll see uh, where everything is. I mentioned corn, wheat, big move up in wheat today, which helps us. Uh, this is a, another one that if price stays pretty steady. We'll, we'll, we'll close out of this piece of the trade. We've also got a, a short put vertical that we that was from our other iron condor, and this has come in nicely. I mean, price was way down here, looking like we were going to take a loss on that piece, and it's ripped all the way back almost into range. So that's just part of the game, and, and I get questions about this a lot when we have a position that goes against us. Hey, you know, should we close this out? What do we, you know, what are we doing? And you know you've got to let the probabilities play out. So look what look what wheat did today. I mean, just ripped higher, up over almost five percent just today, getting us almost back into range. So things can change very quickly. So stay with the probabilities and let them play out. Uh, Apple is another one that we have on, and this is one that we originally put on for some short delta in our portfolio, and we've rolled a couple times. Just looking for some more downside in Apple to benefit that piece. Uh, EEM, we've got a short strangle on here, still very centered, got a little bit of profit, not enough to book yet. EWW, we've got a strangle here as well. Uh, uh, implied volatility has expanded and price has moved up a little bit, so we're still well within our range, but looking for some more time to pass there. 
we take a look at the chart, the implied volatility has just stayed, continued to stay high in this Mexican ETF. So we'll continue to trade that uh, as we can. EWZ, the Brazilian ETF, kind of the same story, some high implied volatility. This thing has just been on a downward slide. You can see uh, we've, we had one strangle on and price had moved out of our range. We rolled down our calls. Now, if we take a look at the calls here, you know, we've still got some profit left to get in that piece, so we're, we're not making any adjustments yet. This is in July, which has 21 days to expiration. So, looked at rolling this today, but gonna give it uh, over the weekend, and then we'll, we'll roll that one early next week. This, uh, the other piece of EWZ is this strangle here, which, we've, which is very centered, got, a, got some profit there, but just waiting for some more time to pass. To, uh, to book that one. I mentioned FXI, IWM. So we've got an iron condor in IWM, which has come in nicely. Uh, it was almost to our break even, almost ready to make an adjustment, but it came, came back into range here. So got some profit, waiting for a little bit more before we book that. And then we've also got a short call vertical, which was previously from an iron condor. So same thing, just looking for a little bit more downside before we take that off. IYR, the real estate ETF, I mentioned that, mentioned Qs, and mentioned XLK. So that's all the trades for the week. That's all of our positions. Everybody have a great weekend. Short week next week. We've got 4th of July, which falls smack dab in the middle of the week on Wednesday. Uh, so no trading on that day, but we will be trading and sending alerts the rest of the week. So everybody have a great week. Talk to you next, next time.